turn it off. I had a chat, and they were like, are you okay, Mr. Diaz? Yeah, I'm okay. I sat down. They gave me a Coca-Cola because the what? sugar. What? You have to tap. Huh? Why did you, why did you tap out? Because they put the fucking, I was okay on Flatland. But once they started playing with the fucking directions and shit up and down, <laughs> playing with my emotions, that's what I thought I was going to fall. So I, I started panicking about that and texting at eight in the morning. <laughs> I got no coffee in me. So they sat me down. They gave me some Coke. And then they did something <laughs> else. They did, you know, I had to lay down and do pictures of my heart and shit. And they kicked me out of there. I was I went in at 8 30 and I walked out of there at 20 to 12. So I was straight as a dog, right? So I was like, damn, I didn't faint. But the next day I had PRP. Thursday. PRP is where they take your blood out and then it and then they they mix it with some fucking chemicals and a bunch of Malukia juice, and then they put it into the location that hurts. So I did it on the one side of the knee, but now I could feel the inside of the knee starting to go. So I went to the doctor and he's like, listen, Joe, you don't have, you got a couple options, but try the PRP again. Insurance don't cover it, but it works for a lot of people. And it did work for me, but on the left side of my knee, I had to double check what hand I was putting out. You know what I'm saying? When you eat over five edibles, you don't know what hand you're putting out. So <laughs> you put this hand up like for a boy's scout. Next thing you know. So, so the PRP is at 3.15 in the afternoon. That gives me a chance to smoke dope, you know, fucking eat breakfast, eat lunch. I was going to go to the gym that morning, but I had my daughter. Last week, kids were off. And my wife had to go to a banquet in the morning, like a breakfast meeting thing till 12. So I had my daughter. I just took her shop and whatever we needed to do. And then in the afternoon, I went to PRP. I went in there with my speakers on, you know. I went over to Apex, my dog over there, right? Dr. Severino, good dude. I've been to him before. You know, you don't faint. Nothing like that happens to you. So I laid back. What arm do you want? That? I go time out with the right arm. They just shot me in there with a fucking plastic tube yesterday. We got to switch governments and shoot it over to the left arm, right? So I put on the, my usual anthem. When I draw blood, I put on Santana. Oye, como va? I'm one of those dudes. I put it on <laughs> from the beginning. By the time he's taking the rubber band off my arm and opening my hand and inserting the needle, it's already going. So I'm in, I feel a little prick of the needle, and then I breathe it out. <laughs> and they pull my arm up, and I'm like, that didn't hurt at all. I could be strictly honest with you. But this one was different. They stuck the needle in my arm. And Lee, a fucking minute went by. Now I'm going, holy shit, I've grown up a lot. Because 30 years ago, after 10 seconds, I go down. I start thinking about it. Lee. So the needle was still in your arm? For fucking a whole minute while they were drawing oh, blood. Oh, fuck no. Oh, yeah, they're drawing, I don't know how many CCs. You're there for a little while, dog. And finally, we hit like two minutes. I'm two minutes into this song. Trust me, I've heard this song 10,000 fucking times. And it's at the two-minute mark. And I'm like, holy shit, I can't believe I haven't fainted yet. And I didn't even finish thinking that. And he goes, he taps me, and he goes, how you doing? And I go, not bad. And he goes, five more seconds. And then he took it out, put my arm up. I took the earphones off. Obviously, it turns off, right? <laughs> and I'm talking to him. And brother, the next thing you know, the room started getting hot in a motherfucker. I felt like Nelly. And that's why you got to take your clothes off, whatever that song is. It was, hot hot. Here, yeah. it was hot in there to the point where I had to lay back. And I started sliding off the chair. It got hot out of control. I started seeing spots around my eyes. And then I said to him, Doc, can you bring a fucking ice pack for me? And he brought it immediately. And I could feel him put hard ice on my neck. And within fucking 30 seconds, it was water. Then he put one on my chest and one on my fucking head in the front. And all of them melted within fucking 30 seconds, dog. Hysterical. 
I drank. Why do you think you got so hot? Just from just from my my, my, my blood my blood pressure dropped. You got yeah. hot. I, but dog, I, I made it without fainting. I made it without complaining. I, I grew up a lot. I'm 60. By this point, hopefully you can do something right. You know what I'm saying? So now I leave that joint. I'm not going to say the name of the restaurant. They're good people. I'm sitting here at home. I come home just to make sure I'm okay. My knee's fine. By the way, bro, that's a, the easiest procedure you'll ever do. Which is I, what? Which one? The one at Apex. This is the my second. Test? There's nobody, anybody who's been listening to me for a while, my dear friends, they all know I'm not comfortable around needles. I'm just, there's something about fucking needles I just don't feel comfortable around. I drive myself down there, guys. You know, that that's like me driving myself to get shot in my world. Okay? Me going to the doctor to take, a, put any type of needle in me. In my head, <laughs> me driving myself to get in front of a fucking firing squad. Like, I already go in there feeling fucking gloomy. My stomach hurts. And then you read that book, and you know it's called Resistance. Resistance just doesn't go against you, and you're creative. It'll go against your health. There's people that'll die before they go to the fucking doctor. Now, I'm not fucking, you know, friendly with the doctors, but you got to go in there and talk to people from time to time and check things out. And, yeah, I'm very lucky. I didn't go to the doctor from the time I was 18 to like 30 something. You know, I didn't get a physical to move that way. So yeah, it, it's something that like I struggle with because like, I, I lost a good amount of weight. I put like 20 pounds back on, unfortunately. Um, but I, I did you ever get to the point where like you didn't, I, my, my whole thing yeah. was I don't want to go until I'm under a certain number. Like, do you, you have any like is that part of like did your weight go into you not want to go to the doctor? There was a point where, like most people, you're just embarrassed. Who wants to go in front of a doctor when the last time you went in there, you were 260 and now you're 315? And that happens a lot, Lee. And in that process, you get diabetes, you might get a blood clot in your leg, you know, you might, you know, so it's worth it. Like I didn't go to the doctor for a long time, man. And, and knock on wood, I, I don't know. But once I started going to the doctor, I think it felt a lot better on my fucking scope, like that I'm going to the doctor. I'm doing something for myself. For a couple of years, then my wife had to drive me, you know, because she knew I would make a U-turn and cancel the appointment. 